that, I will read the uh, proponents and opponents of the bill, and then I will make a brief statement. Um, so proponents are um, Bacola Bello from the Municipal Employees Annuity and Benefit Fund of Chicago, David Schwartz as himself, um, Dennis White, Jeff Johnson, Stacy Ruffalo, and Steve Yoon, all from the Municipal Employees and Benefit Fund of Chicago, and Matthew Strom from the Siegel Group. There are seven opponents, um, Patrick Hall, Jenny Bennett, uh, Maria Martinez, and uh, all from the city of Chicago, uh, Andrew Young, uh, representing himself, and Mitchell Remmert from the Illinois Municipal League. Now, before we pr proceed, Senator Vovalon, will you, uh, uh, the, the chair is going to make a statement. Um, just to remind the members that we did have a full subject matter hearing on this issue. Um, uh, and during that subject matter hearing, um, there was testimony that was elicited that um, the Municipal Employees and Annuity Benefit Fund, uh, which is suffering uh, tremendous shortfalls in terms of the amount of funding, uh, received a warning from their actuary that without seeking additional funding, that the fund was at great risk of insolvency. Um, we heard testimony about uh, the fund, uh, about the history of, of insufficient funding and that there is sort of a continuation for that for the next couple of years where the fund is very much at risk. We also heard from the city of Chicago where they testified that they are making their statutorily required contributions, albeit they admitted that those are substantially short of what the actuary required contribution is, but that they intend to meet their actuary or retired uh, contribution in 2023. So that, that is my summation of, of what was happening. Now, I've asked the, um, I've asked Senator Villabalan, uh to have this vote on this bill to move it to the floor because um, at that subject matter hearing, the city of Chicago um, had committed towards working towards finding some sort of solution to this funding gap. Um, and we just want to give them an opportunity, continue to work on the bill, to continue to tr try and work together to find solutions. So this is merely to keep the clock moving on this and, and not cutting the thing off so they can continue to work together and, and hopefully draw a little bit more attention to this issue and, and you know provide some uh, very, very difficult solutions. So that is my summation of the bill. I would like to proceed to a vote without rehashing all of the testimony. I think everyone here is well aware of that. I think that would be the committee's preference, unless, I wanna offer this, unless someone feels that there is something new or something that has materially changed from the testimony that was offered. Um, again, uh, this would be a commitment from the sponsor and I will turn to Senator Vovalam that we'll have a commitment that this will not, this is not being pushed out to have a vote on the floor but to uh, continue to keep working with the city of Chicago so that we can address this problem. Senator Vovalam, I'll turn to you at this point. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the committee. Uh, I, I, I concur. I, I believe we need to continue uh, uh, and, and have a meeting on this uh, incredibly important issue. Uh, this is, you know, uh, I believe an issue that uh, our residents, our constituents want us to continue to work on and hopefully the legislation moving out of committee um, will help with that. I've had uh, good conversations with um, MEABF. Uh, I had a productive conversation with the city. I think it's time for us to, you know, continue the conversation and have a meeting and go from there. Okay. And with that, um, unless, and let, again, if, if, if some witness thinks that there's something that is uh, crucial for the committee to hear that they haven't heard, now would be the time. And I don't see any of that. So with that, I'll move. Senator DeWitt, I apologize. Question. Uh, mute. Sorry. Losing my touch here. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, Senator Villavlam, thank you very much for this legislation. I can certainly appreciate the concern with regards to the city's pension liabilities. Um, but frankly, this feels a lot like deja vu all over again with the uh, process we went through with the firefighters pension fund just a couple of brief weeks ago, several weeks ago. Uh, that significantly increased the burden on the city of Chicago with regard to the pension payments. Um, given that they're going to be raising with the existing ramp that's in place, I, I would be very interested to hear from the city of Chicago what this legislation would do to the existing pension payment burden 
that the city is currently carrying? And number two, what does this do to the long-term debt uh, with regards to um, the city's long-term uh, unfunded liability with regards to this legislation? I just want to hear the numbers. Um, some of you may recall there was a, a report out of Moody's this past week that uh, put a negative slant on the city's finances because of the burden that was placed on the city's financial condition by the increased costs of the firefighter pension increase. Um, these debts fall directly onto the taxpayers of the city of Chicago. And it's these types of decisions that continue to put pension burden on today on the city of Chicago. But if these funds aren't, if these pension funds aren't caught up, um, this is all going to fall on the residents of the state of Illinois to, 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 to undig them from the hole that we're creating. So uh, with all due respect, Mr. Chairman, I would be interested in hearing the opposition, particularly from the city of Chicago, with regards to this proposal. Thank you. So um, before we proceed to the city of Chicago, um, uh, just uh, Senator, did, did, you did hear their testimony before and they would, I, I believe that they, since they did not wish to step up, they would say that their testimony would be a repeat of that testimony. Do you wish to hear that testimony again? I'm looking for two particular pieces of information, Mr. Chairman. I would like to know what this legislation would do to the existing scheduled pension payments of what appear to be $499 million in fiscal year 21, $576 million in fiscal year 22. What would those payments go up to if this legislation passes? Fair and what is, the additional, what is the additional burden put on the city with regards to this legislation? Which would be the same the same answer, right? You're just looking for what would be the increase in the pension payment. So if I remember correctly, and I see Mr. Hall is there to testify, I believe that the, uh, the statutory requirements were 421 million and 576 million were the payments in 21 and 22. I believe that the actuary required contribution, and Mr. Hall can correct me on specifics, existed around 1.1 billion. And what this would do is require an 80% and a 90% of actuary required contributions in those years. Mr. Hall, you can correct me if I got my numbers wrong, please. No, that, that's, that's accurate. Thank you, Chairman, and, and thank you, Senator DeWitt. Um, we're talking about a, a roughly $804 million increase over the next three years in our contributions. Uh, that's on top of the, the numbers that you cited, Senator DeWitt, $576 million dollars in uh, contribution year 2022. And how would the city make up that difference? I think the only lever we have to raise that much funding would be a property tax increase, which, which is part of why this is a complicated issue due to uh, roughly $1.7 billion in lost revenue during the pandemic. Um, and so I think largely from our perspective, this is a timing issue and uh, lack of, of viable revenue streams to, to solve this. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. And, and I would point out again that um, we have a commitment from the sponsor not to try and move the bill on the floor, but rather to continue discussions. The, the debt won't go away. It's going to be paid one way or the other. And if the fund goes insolvent and the city goes pay as you go, the property tax increases then will be far in excess of whatever would be done here. So uh, this is uh, hopefully working together to find a solution to a very, very difficult financial problem. So thank you for those good questions, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Senator, Stoller. Senator Stoller, question. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate your comments. I do have concerns about this bill. However, I, I appreciate the sponsor's willingness to continue negotiating on it. So I'm going to vote to help get this out of committee. Uh, but I appreciate that and look forward to seeing some sort of continued negotiations. So thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Stoller. Any other members wishing to be recognized at this point? Uh, if not on, on uh, the commitment of the sponsor that this bill would not be moved unless there was some sort of agreement we reached and with the intention that this is to continue working on a very difficult issue, um, I would then 
Uh, Senator Feigenholz moves that Senate Bill 212 do pass. Senator Connor seconds the motion. And will the clerk please read the roll? Senator Stoller? Yes. Senator DeWitt? Pending additional negotiation, I vote no. Senator Stewart? Yes. Senator Villavalam? I would, I'm, I'm going to vote yes on my bill. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Villa? Yes. Senator Harris? Yes. Senator Connor? Yes. Senator Feigenholz? I am going to conditionally vote yes on this. I have extraordinarily grave concerns about the cost and the acceleration. I think conceptually it's a great idea, but we're in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> and um, I'm going to reserve my right to vote no on the floor if this moves this way. Thank you. I'll vote aye. Mr. Chairman? Yes. And, and Mr. Chairman? Yes, Senator Vilborn. I want to thank you and thank the members of the committee. You know, I, I, I understand that the complex nature of this. However, I would, I would argue, you know, if not now, when, you know, when can we, you know, when should we start these conversations? We need to have these conversations. Uh, and so uh, I appreciate the support and committee to um, have, make sure we get a meeting on this. Thank you, Senator. With uh, eight members voting yes, one member voting no, and zero voting present, the bill shall be so reported to the floor. And Senator Vobalam and to my friends in the city of Chicago, please work hard and, and good luck at solving this problem. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.